Hi everybody, welcome to Webby on Cars, and in today's video I'm going to be testing the Hyundai i20N. Now this is the smallest member of Hyundai's N family, but don't discount it because this is a proper little pocket rocket. It may be the smallest, it's got the smallest engine, it only comes with a manual gearbox, it's front wheel drive, but don't discount all that because this is an absolutely cracking little car. Now starting off on the outside of the i20N, and when you look at the body shape, you can see all these angles and lines. Um, whoever's designed this car is a genius because this thing looks absolutely fantastic. Um, it doesn't look like your regular sort of super mini that you know your mum might go to the shops in. This is a proper little pocket rocket. And you've got things like the creases down the bonnet. We've got all the angles on the front bumper. We've got all the creases in the doors that go down the side of the car. So this thing means business. And under the bonnet is a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine. It's good for 150 kilowatt and 275 newton metres of torque. Uh, as I said a minute ago, it's front wheel drive. It's a six speed manual gearbox, but it's also got a mechanical limited slip differential. So that helps you when you're coming out of a tight corner, having a bit of fun on some twisty roads. Um, this thing will handle like you wouldn't believe, which we'll find out actually when we take it out later for a drive. Uh, now looking at the front of the car, uh, we've got this lovely gloss black grille at the front. We've got obviously the end badging, which is cool. Uh, LED headlights with LED daytime running lamps. Uh, fog lights down the bottom. We've even got some aero down the side here, which actually works, um, rather than just being sort of fake vents at the front. We also see front parking sensors, although this is a small car. Uh, it's nice to see things like the front parking sensors on the front of the car. Um, but just the overall sort of stance at the, at the front, it's a very sort of aggressive looking car, as you can tell from the design. Um, I particularly like the fact that this car isn't in the performance blue, the, the blue that you see every um, you know, Hyundai N model in. Um, I don't mind the blue, but it just, everybody has the blue, so it gets a bit kind of like tedious, if you like. I do like the fact that this one's got the black roof. I do like the contrast when you've got a color and then the black roof. I think if I was gonna buy one of these, I'd probably get it in white with the black roof. I think that's quite a nice sort of contrast. Uh, coming around the side, you've also got things like the black uh, wing mirrors as well. We've got 18 inch alloys here um, in this sort of lovely sort of gray finish, the end badging uh, in the center cap as well. Covered in Pirelli P0 tires, so a serious uh, sort of bit of kit in terms of tires. The brakes are 320 mil, um, so that's a decent stopping power for a small car. Um, but then I suppose you've got to factor in the fact that this is a quick little car as well and i do like the fact that you get the little end logo on the brake calipers too uh, another nice little touch so coming around to the side and it's got a really handsome side profile as well it sits really low to the ground it, it almost looks sort of coupe like i love the body kit you've got down the bottom here and then you've got another little end badge uh, in the in the uh the end of the side skirt there as well you've even got little things like i20 um, sort of emblazoned on the on the rear lights as well. So it's quite a there's a lot of sort of design cues going on with this car. It's um yeah it's a it's a cool little car. And then when you come out to the back of the i20N, all this aggressive styling continues as well. You got this rally inspired rear spoiler stuck on the top of the car. Coming down to the bottom, you've got the rear diffuser down here. You've got that triangular tail light uh, that we've also seen on the i30N. The exhaust is like a big over one, a bit like an Audi, like an RS3 or an RS6 or something like that. Um, and so that's a proper exhaust. There's no kind of fakery going on here. Um, it would actually be quite cool, I think, if there was two exhausts, like one either side. I think that'd be better. Um, even if it was just like two round exhausts, like you get sort of like on the, on, on the i30. Um, I don't know, I just think it'd be slightly better looking. Uh, but even so, we've got things like LED taillights at the back here as well. Um, and the body kit that we had at the front and around the sides continues down the back here as well. Um, so it is, again, it's a very sort of aggressive design. Um, they've obviously put a lot of thought into what the, uh, the aesthetics of this car is like. Now, although this is a small hatchback, the boot space is actually quite generous. We open up to find 310 litres with the back seats in space. You can actually remove the boot floor if you want something uh, a little bit taller to go in there or you end up with a little cubby hole under the boot floor as well. The seats fold down, uh, obviously, and also quite easily from the back of the car. 
And when they're all laid down, you've got just over 1,100 litres of carrying capacity. So as you can see, you've got a really generous amount of space in there. The only downside is we haven't got any power sockets here in the boot, but there is a subwoofer for the Bose sound system. Now before we get stuck into the interior of the i20N, if you are enjoying this video, then please give it a like. If you also enjoy watching new car reviews, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And in that way, every time I upload a new video, you'll get a notification straight away. That said and done, let's jump on the inside and have a look at the i20N. All right, so let's jump inside then. Uh, so keyless entry is standard, which is obviously nice to see. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have got an eight speaker Bose audio system, which is fantastic. As you can see here in the door, we've got some nice little cubby holes, with sunglasses, bottled water, uh, so there's plenty of space in there. Looking at the actual seating itself, um, as is typical with Hyundai's N brand, the seats are absolutely fantastic. We've got loads of bolstering down the side here and obviously around the ribcage area as well. Uh, the seats are actually cloth in the middle and then this sort of fake leather on the outside. Manually adjustable, as you'd probably expect in a small car like the i30. Uh, and then you get this sort of little blue tag here, uh, just to sort of give a bit of colour to the inside, and then the end badge in there uh, on the sort of built-in headrest. The rest of it is sort of pretty standard fare, but let's jump inside and have a look. So the steering wheel was very familiar, uh, if you've been in an end product before. Uh, nice sort of perforated leather, and then you've got the blue uh, buttons there for the end modes. Other than that, you've got normal buttons there for obviously your phone, your music, uh, and then over this side, some of your safety bits and pieces like your cruise control and your lane keeping aid. In front of the driver, we've got the very familiar digital instrument display that we've seen in some of the other uh, Hyundai models recently. Uh, I've had this in the Kona N, the Kona N line, uh, so it's a very familiar unit. Uh, and it's actually a really nice sort of design. It's very clear and laid out. Uh, so this is in the standard mode at the moment. If you put the car into the end mode, it then switches, you get that nice little animation and the little sort of ring of fire around the central rev counter. It's also nice to see the oil and engine temperature over on the left hand side. Because if you are gonna go for a bit of a, an enthusiastic drive, shall we say, then it's good to know that the engine's warmed up properly so you don't do any damage. Um, so yeah, it's nice that there's a good, uh, there's kind of practical information there as well, if you like. Uh, but it does show you things like the traction controls now in sport mode, the rev matching switched on. Uh, and then just down here, you can see that the engine in it, engine is, is in its most aggressive mode. And the steering is also in its weight, uh, the most weight. Uh, and that's something you can actually adjust uh, in the sat nav screen, which I'll show you in a minute. So now coming from the instrument cluster, we then come over to the 10.5 inch infotainment display in the center of the dashboard there. Um, so again, we have seen this in other cars as well. It's got built-in satellite navigation, uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are both uh, via cable, they're not wireless. Uh, if we swipe across, we've then got the main menus. And then one we're really interested in is the end mode. So this is where you can go and adjust different functions about um, the end mode and you can put custom settings in as well. But you also got things like track mode as well, because remember, the five-year warranty that Hyundai put on their end models also enables you and covers you for use on a track as well, which for a lot of people is actually going to be quite a useful feature. Uh, we can then come across, and this is where we can customise the different settings of the car. So if you don't want it in pure sport mode, you can adjust things like, um, so this is my sort of custom two setting. I've got most stuff dialed up to the maximum setting, but I've kept the steering on the lowest setting. Um, because when you put the steering in the heavy setting for general day-to-day -day use, it makes the steering a little bit too heavy for me. Um, so I like to have a slightly softer set, uh, setting for the steering. Um, but it's quite cool that you can actually adjust all these things individually, particularly on a small car like this. You know, you get it on the i30N, but you wouldn't necessarily expect it to be on the i20N. And then from there, we come down a bit further. We've got the controls for the air conditioning. Uh, it's only single zone, but it is climate control. So obviously, uh, whatever temperature you put in, it will uh, automatically adjust that for you. Then coming down further, we've actually got two USB connections, but it's only this one on the left that will do your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto. Uh, the other one on the right-hand side is purely for charging your phone. Uh, you've then got a 12-volt socket there as well. Uh, and then down below there, you've got a wireless phone charger. The buttons uh, there in front, or 
well, in front of the gear stick, uh, it's to operate your cameras, your sensors, and then there is the button to adjust your drive modes as well. Uh, and then we've got this rather cool gear stick here, the N logo again on the six-speed manual gear stick. Uh, it's actually a really nice um, sort of gear stick to use. It's, there's enough sort of notchiness to it without being sort of clunky and horrible. Um, but yeah, it's a really sort of nice, it grips sort of really well in your hand and it's just a nice sort of thing to use. Now coming inside to the i20N, the driving position is absolutely superb. Um, these sport seats really sort of hug you in well. The pedals are nice and straight in front of you so you get a good sort of feel for where everything is. The steering wheel again, dead centre in front of you which is really good. Um, so the actual sort of driving position is really, really nice. Visibility out of front is absolutely fantastic, uh, as is the side windows as well. Uh, and you've even got blind spot monitor as standard on this car. Getting into the back of the i20N, and it's actually really spacious back here. Way more space than I was expecting for such a small car. As you can see, I've got absolutely acres of legroom. Uh, I mean, I'm only five foot six, and the front seat is in my driving position. But yeah, look how much legroom. I reckon there's more space in here, comfortably, than a Toyota Corolla. Easy as much as the i30, the, you know, his bigger brother. It's so impressive for such a small car. You can just about get your feet under the driver's seat. So on a longer journey, you can stretch your legs out a bit um, without sort of getting too uncomfortable. There's a decent amount of headroom. Um, yeah, I've got plenty of headspace there. The windows are nice, decent size, so it lets a lot of light in, which is nice as well. There's no air vents in the center, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but we do get one USB port down there for charging phones and iPads and things. Uh, and then there's a, a little sort of cubby hole for storage uh, for a little few bits and pieces as well. Um, there's only a, a sort of map holder or map pocket there for the passenger side. Not quite sure why we don't get one on the driver's side, but um, there you are. Can't complain about what you haven't got. Um, there's no fold down armrest though, which is, I think is a bit of an oversight because normally you'd get an armrest with a couple of cup holders. Um, yeah, which, which seems strange really. I know it's a small car, but if it is gonna be, you know, carrying a couple of kids in the back, which is, you know, what you probably design this car for, it's a real shame there's no armrest and cup holders or a bit of storage for kids to keep devices. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a strange oversight, I think. You do get the ISOFIX settings um, for obviously child seats, so that's good to see as well. Um, and overall, yeah, back here, it's not an unpleasant place to be. Um, like I say, heaps and heaps of space, and um, yeah, it makes it quite nice. All right, let's take this i20 in for a drive. Um, I've got a GoPro on the back, so we are hoping to get some decent exhaust notes. And turning cycles a bit, turning cycles a bit big, but um, that was the same on the i30, to be honest. So it's all to do with having that limited slip diff. travel before the clutch actually starts to bite and the trick that I've found is if you kind of push that little bit of resistance before you go to change gear and then when you actually change gear you're just using the pressure on the clutch pedal just to actually engage the clutch 
probably sounds a bit strange trying to describe it, but um, that's that's the sort of trick I found anyway, because it, it just makes for a bit of a smoother gear change. It certainly handles corners really, really well, and there's plenty of grip from those Pirelli P0 tyres. And um, yeah, you can certainly have a lot of fun, and that mechanical limited slip diff helps too. on the wrong side of the speed limit fairly quickly so you do have to be a little bit restrained with the throttle input because um yeah you soon find yourself with a few points and uh a nice little fine i think this i20n though is best enjoyed on a nice smooth flat road surface because it definitely does get upset by the bumps which here in melbourne there's a lot and even though this is electric power steering, you could be forgiven if you if you mistakenly said it was a mechanical system because it's just so well weighted and you know you get so much communication through the steering wheel as to what's happening with the front wheels. Oh, geez, it does pick up speed quite quickly. Actually, coming into a, a set of twisty country roads, and it's like this is the natural habitat for the I-20, and it just comes alive. Um, yeah, stuck on a freeway or down a dual carriageway, yeah, it's um, it's just like any other car on the road. But when you throw some twisty corners and uh, you know grab it by the scruff of the neck and have some fun with it, yeah, it, it responds very very well it's almost the sort of car you'd have as a second car just for a bit of weekend fun you'd have a normal car for day to day stuff and then this you'd have this as a weekend toy that's not an expensive weekend toy it's about $37,000 drive away here in Australia which is an absolute bargain for what you get for your money I reckon you'd have as much fun in this as you would in the more expensive it's bigger brother the i30N. Sure you get more power, you get more torque, you get a bit more space in the i30. But you can have just as so much fun in this car and save yourself a big chunk of money. Because the i30N starts at around $50,000. So you can save yourself $13,000 by one of these before you're buying it for just for pure driving enjoyment. It's actually quite interesting, whenever I take the press cars that I get to work, all the guys and girls at work always ask questions about it, what is it, and what's it drive like, that sort of thing. And a, a lot of people came and looked at this, and it's almost like they, they knew what it was, but obviously hadn't driven one. And they're all curious as to sort of what it goes like, and just the design and the look of the car, it's, it got a lot of attention. So that brings us to an end to the video with this Hyundai i20N. Um, I've had an absolute blast in the car this week. Um, it took me a few days to get used to the biting point of the clutch and driving a manual gearbox again. Uh, but once I've done that, it has been fantastic. Find a set of twisty roads and you'll just have an absolute blast in this little car. The ride is a bit firm for some people, um, particularly if you live in areas where the roads aren't particularly great. Um, but if you live somewhere where it's got decent roads and lots of twisty roads, you really can't go wrong with this little car. It's got loads of tech, it's got a five-year warranty. Um, it's just an absolute blast to drive. And for $37,000 drive away, what else can you get for that sort of money and have that much fun? If you've liked the video, um, let me know, give it a, a thumbs up. Put any questions or comments you've got in the comment section below for me and I'll answer them as soon as I can for you. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to find out every time a new video goes live. So that just leaves me to say thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.